<laughs> All right, we're getting ready to get it started on our section hike. <laughs> Thanks for dropping me off. Be safe. I will. Love you. All right, the trail starts off from that sign. You got to cross the Interstate 64 and uh, we'll head into Shenandoah National Park. All right, we just climbed up from the highway and we just stopped at the kiosk and got our uh, backcountry permit. Right now, I just got it on my shoulder. So I didn't want to take my bag off, I guess, since I just put it on. And I'll put it on the back uh, in my next break. The cost is it's no cost. It just kind of tracks you uh, through the park. So I think we'll be here four days in the park and uh and then we'll be out so our goal is to uh get from rockfish gap to harper's ferry or somewhere north of that so between 160 and 180 miles and it's kind of just a test to me to see what i can do and as we think about through hiking, you know, what's it going to be like, you know, to spend day after day on a trail getting miles in. So the goal is to get up early each day and then hike till seven and wherever that lands us, lands us. So today it's one o'clock and we'll hike till about seven or seven thirty and find a spot and then make camp so All right, I'm uh, three miles in and um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes worth of uh, walking. We climbed about a thousand feet um, since we got started down in Rockfish Gap and uh, got to our first overlook. And I think we're looking at Waynesboro and there's not much to see. Unfortunately, there's some wildfires burning in Canada uh, that have brought a smoky haze that you can smell in the air um, uh, down into Virginia and a lot of other states as well. So I don't think we're going to have a lot of views um, unless a fort front comes and pushes things out. So I am thankful. I mean, um, Emily dropped me off at Rockfish Gap and that's a kind of a sobering thing. You know, you get a few miles in and you realize that you're walking away from um, transportation and civilization. And that's kind of a strange thing you know we've done loops so you always know you're coming back or day hikes um so you're always coming back to your car but now you know i'm headed out and uh walking away from home so kind of a strange thing you know i anticipate that that's what you know when you start a through hike um or any section hike for that matter that's any distance that that's the kind of feeling you have you know, we got some Chick-fil-A for lunch before I came and I'm really happy about that because as you come out of Rockfish Gap, you start climbing right away. So those extra calories are, are nice. All right, you out where we just were on that ridge, you like walk straight down. And then you're on a piece of, I guess, private property for just a second. And then you cross over uh, this fence with this crossing. And then the Appalachian Trail crosses the uh, parkway. I guess it's not the parkway. This is Skyline Drive. 
So, once you come into Shenandoah Park, it goes from the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, to Skyline Drive. So this is the crossing at McCormick Gap. Well, that sucked. We're up high, about 2,850 feet or so. So coming out of McCormick Gap, you climb 400 feet straight up. And it's straight up. You know, you cross the road and you're feeling all right, thinking maybe you'll have a gradual climb. Nope. And a half mile, 400 feet. And now we're up on the ridge and some uh, scrub trees. And at least there's a nice breeze. But wow, that was, that was tough. All right, you come up, <coughs> you get to the Rio Tower. There's a propane tank right there. I don't know how the hell they filled that up here. All right, so you get up to the top top and you get to where all the radio towers are in the buildings. Again, I don't know how you get propane up here, but these are the seats. All right, you come off the mountain. I guess for me, I'm a little over five miles in and you can see uh, the AT crosses a little parking area and there's some bathrooms. So you gotta go to the bathroom and you start at Rock Beach Gap. There's a, there's a potty about five miles uh, from where you start. All right, that radio tower up there, that's where it was not too long ago. So now we're up over that same parking area, headed back up into the mountain. All right. We made it to the summit of Little Calf Mountain. You can't see much, like I said, the veil of smoke from those Canadian wildfires. I think I read this morning that <clears throat> like you can just barely see the mountains in the distance. I don't know if that comes out on the camera. But like 100 square miles of fires are burning in uh, Nova Scotia and they've got 150 wildfires in Quebec that are um, burning right now. So there's a lot of the United States right now that's got some air quality issues because of those fires. <clears throat> so you're climbing when you come to a rock set. Come up on top of this ridge and there's just this random pile of rocks. I would say it's a pile of rocks on the top of a mountain. We're almost at 3,000 feet. So I guess somebody collected them and put them there. All right, came to the first water on the trail so i'm at seven and a half miles and so there's a spring and two tenths of a mile from here and then there's a shelter uh right near it so all right so i decided to come up to the spring by the calf mountain shelter um not knowing how far i'm going to go today it looks like there's no water until you get to the next shelter and i wanted to make sure i had plenty for night 
for dinner and breakfast in case I stop early. All right, that was a great choice. Had a cookie, get some calories in me, and uh, some water. I got about two liters of water from here, and it comes out ice cold, so it's so refreshing. I'm sitting here just drinking water probably more than I should, but it tastes so good. Coming uh, cold, and uh, even even before it's filtered, it, it's clear as a bell. So um, I used a Katadin Be Free. Uh, to filter the water and uh, it's good. Glad I stopped. Little snake, it's gray. Uh, I don't know what kind of snake that is. I have to look it up. First one I've seen today, so no real animals. Um, bunches of squirrels, birds, and stuff. <clears throat> I've only seen uh, two uh, day hikers, a guy running the trail, and then I guess about a mile or so back, I saw some hikers camped up in the woods. But I didn't see them. So other than that, I've been by myself all day. Haven't seen anyone, really. You know, and the only person that was kind of friendly was the trail runner guy. Everybody else just was motoring on by. All right, I just uh, hit 10 miles uh, a little bit ago, and uh, it's um, 5.30, so we've been making good time. Um, we started at one o'clock, so we've been cruising through, you know, a couple breaks, get some water. You know, I guess a lot of stuff goes through your head on that first day, right, as you, as you walk away from the car, in my case, uh, Emily, the, my better half, you know, you know, you're not going to see her for several days, almost a, a week. And, uh, you know, she's kind of the, my partner in crime or I'm her partner in crime. And a lot of these crazy things that we do from stuff. We've been endurance athletes, you know, for the last 10, 15 years, kind of laid off that during COVID, I think like. You know a lot of people did and um so we've been backpacking off and on for the last you know 10 years or so and i'm um, kind of getting back into it now as uh i'm about to retire so after a career in public safety for the last 27 years so but it's hard you know my uh my son's having some trouble at work he's in the military and, uh, you know, he just had, he's just conflicted right now with some stuff. And, you know, I talked to him about that the day before yesterday. And, you know, you know, when you're out here, there's, there's no cell phone service. And, uh, my stepdaughter, she's, uh, in Florida at her grandparents, um, just got out of school for the year. You know, so she's away. Emily's going to be heading down there. Uh, to hang out with her while I'm off uh, walking in the woods. But, you know, once you get through missing that, you know, you start thinking to yourself, did I make the right decision in doing this? You know, especially as, like, you come out the gate climbing hard. And, uh, you know, I guess I'm at a disadvantage because I'm so big. Um, all my stuff is big. So all my stuff weighs more. And then I burn a lot of calories. So I burn probably twice the calories that someone else out here uh, probably does. You know, I'm 6'9", 235. And most uh, people I see out here are, you know, closer to six foot and 175. And so our calorie burns are quite a bit different. So I got to carry more food, you know, to make sure I got food for the day. And 
you know, water. So my pack's heavy and I, I can feel it. You know, we've done a lot of things to try and lighten the load, ultralight tents and pads. And um, I got a, a pack, an ultralight pack coming, you know, because there's stuff that you have to carry that you just can't not carry. Um, and so we're going to try and shave some weight. This is really a, a test to see how things are. But once you get past the fact that, yeah, we're out here and you start getting into the, I'm just going to be walking. And then your mind kind of starts to drift and wander. And I guess that's where I'm at right now. So it's uh, it's kind of a little roller coaster, if you will, as you go through it of emotions. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately this uh, test to see if, you know, I have what it takes in my, my head to do a through hike, you know, uh, the through hike of the Appalachian Trail. We've looked at the Pacific Crest Trail and John Muir Trail and some of the other different things that are around the presidential traverse just because it's nice being out in woods and the quiet you know the world is so loud nowadays but enough about that all right we just crossed the trail again or the we just crossed the parkway or not the park gosh skyline drive again and we're at one of the overlooks All right, we made it to the Turk Gap parking area. So I think we got two or three more miles to go tonight. Or we're gonna call it a night. Been walking along this ridge for the last mile or so. So that climb out of Turks Gap took a lot out of me. It's 400 feet of elevation change pretty quick. And uh, <clears throat> it's 10 minutes to seven. It's 10 minutes to seven. So uh, we'll find, stop at the next uh, campsite that we see. Um, and get set up for dinner because I'm starving. All right, I think uh, we found camp for the night. It's a nice pine um, flat section. We're up at uh, uh, 3,100 feet, and so I can feel a nice breeze, but we got some good protection. We did 13 and a half miles today with uh, 3,600 feet of elevation gain and 2,400 feet of elevation loss. So I'm pretty happy with that, uh, given that it's, um, we started at one o'clock uh, today. It's just turned seven o'clock right now. So solid uh, 13 and a half mile day. Um, so happy with that. So I'm gonna get camp set up so we, that we can, so I can eat hungry. We uh, finally got everything set up. We got uh, the tent in the background, got, um, dinner uh, cooking. I've got my food bag ready to hang. Uh, we've got a good spot. We got clothes drying from today and uh, our stove set up. I made some coffee too so that'll be cool enough about the time dinner is ready. So good day today. I'm happy with how far we got and uh, um, yeah. So I'm going to eat some dinner and um, go to bed and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.